the Eagles reminded us last week that this is the team, best team in the NFC and has been all season. Mm-hmm. They were 15-1 and one with Jalen Hurts. Coming into the year, I remember just kind of sitting there in August when I normally would and looking at the roster yeah. and saying, I think this is the best roster in the NFC, top to bottom. They have no holes. Mm-hmm. After trading for C.J. Gardner-Johnson especially, if you look at that team after that move and drafting Jordan Davis mm-hmm. in the first round of the draft, what was the biggest weakness on the roster? Like for me, it was a linebacker. That's it. That's it. So you had those two linebacker spots. You're like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, no. yeah. You know, other than that, you top to bottom, they had, and that was the case in 2017 when they had the best roster in the league. Right. So I looking at it, I was like, man, this kind of feels like the way I was thinking about that team going into that season. I didn't pick them to go this far in the playoffs because I had my concerns about if you're on the road against Tampa, or even if you're hosting Tampa and we thought the Bucs mm-hmm. were going to be really good, or you're playing against one of these really good defenses, which they're about to do this weekend. What does Jalen Hurts look like in a playoff game? That's because fair. we had just seen that game against the Bucs, and mm-hmm. it was so fresh in my mind. It's like, that seems like a pretty big gap for him to get over, even with the rest of the roster. Yep. But two lessons, I think, that I've learned. One, how far that roster can take you. Yeah. And how much it can lift you, but also what that sort of infrastructure can do for the development of a quarterback yeah. and twofold. I think what the rest of the roster has done damage wise, but also how it's insulated him and really brought him to a different place. The plan came together. I mean, yes. every single aspect of what you wanted this to be for the Eagles fell into place. And now we get to see if they can finish this whole thing off. Yeah, that's exactly it. It was that that Tampa game was like, oh, OK, you know. Jay, you know, Hertz has gotten a lot better, but man, he's got far away to go, you know, a long, long ways to go. And this whole year, all he does is improve. That's all he does is improve. That's how this whole, uh, whole team really is. They improve and adjust. And I think, yes, there's still stuff that he has to work on, but it's been amazing to watch him do some things. I didn't even know he had in his back. And I, I'll talk about it when breaking him down against the 49ers defense, but like throwing over the middle and, and anticipating a little bit on those throws rather than guessing where to go with the ball. It seemed like that he did last year. Just become comfortable getting reps. That 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 matters. I think the other thing I underestimated was as much as I we, we've talked about this, but as much as I loved AJ Brown, I just didn't understand if that would fit perfectly with this offense because maybe I just lacked that imagination. Well, it worked great. Good players are good players, and being vertical did not hinder AJ Brown whatsoever. And I think that's what it boosted this team even more than I was anticipating. Having, but like you said. The plan came together. They stuck the landing. Anyone can make these try and make these super teams and pick guys off the street, and make these trades, and then all just kind of never doesn't match together and doesn't really work. There's so much synergy with this team. And I think that's really what it is, especially when I watch the defense. Okay, we're gonna be in a bunch of quarters, cover three, and this is just one example. Oh, let's get Bradbury, who's great in those schemes you know that makes a ton of sense he's not living in man or living in cover two like that's actually really good that just matters the guys they did pick made sense for what they want to run this team though is it's unbelievable uh there's so many good players so many all pro level players but then just plus starters littered throughout the roster offense defense and that's some of the hardest spots db offensive line like those spots are so hard to fill out and they got multiple good players Awesome roster, and this is why they've blown teams out of the water, including last week, and they're the best team in the NFC all year. I was looking at the end of the season, like looking back and thinking, where was I wrong? Where did I spend too much energy or consternation? And we already got the Colts a lot of time. So (laughs) for both of us, (laughs) we spent so much time. I know I did at least thinking about how the new receivers would fit in the places where they went. You know, what yep. would A.J. Brown look like in the Eagles offense? What would Tyreek mm-hmm. Hill look like in the Dolphins offense? Just get the players and figure it out later. <laughs> Just talent if you talent. get the good players, you'll figure it out later. Yes. And, yes. and I think that that's one of the takeaways I have from the way that the Eagles have built this thing. And the last thing I'll say about Philly is that beyond turning over every rock, which we talked about with Barnwell yep. earlier this week, talking about the lessons we learned from the final four teams, the James Bradbury thing, trading for C.J. Gardner-Johnson, going out and getting Hassan Reddick, Yep. Uh, all the moves that they made, all of the tinkering they consistently do. This season and what the last two years have looked like is a sign to me of just organizational health. Yeah. They are one game away from going to another Super Bowl five years after their last one 
with a different head coach yep. and a different quarterback. Mm -hmm. That's remarkable. Which are, which are usually the uh, stabilizers of stabilizers. <laughs> That's really impressive. It's and incredible. It, it reminds me again point. of just the, the roster building that they've done on that side yep. and kind of what that infrastructure is. You know, just think about all the guys within that front office that have gone on to other jobs recently. Mm -hmm. If they only won one Super Bowl, but Joe Douglas is – gone to the Jets and I think done a pretty good job with that team. Andrew Barry is the GM of the Browns and mm -hmm. there's some moves of his that have been very good. And I think overall he's done a solid job there. Ian Cunningham is the Bears assistant GM. He was there. He's been interviewing for GM jobs, other places. Catherine Raish, who was there, vice president of football operations for like two years, is now the assistant GM in Cleveland. Like there are consistently people are trying to get a piece of what this team is doing. And I think that even what has happened with Nick Sirianni, who was not their first choice, who was not a lot of people's first choice. That was the same thing that happened with Andy Reid 20 years ago, where they went out with kind of an unconventional option as their head coach, and that has paid dividends for them. He has mm -hmm. done a fantastic job. So overall, I just think this is another win and another W in that column for the Eagles as an organization, even compared to what they did five years ago. And the thing for, that always stands out for me is how they built that 2017 team. And now is we talk about, I'll talk about the one thing uh, of team building is, you know, the draft and, and the draft is educated bets. You know, that's what it is. It's getting yourself in the best angle to find group this tier of players. Hopefully we, we hit a double, hopefully we make contact. Sometimes we hit a home run, but pro scouting, the Eagles and pro scouting, I think are the best in the league. Uh, I think, you know, Belichick has been amazing at this for years, but the fact that they can find these guys that make sense for what they want to run on great deals or just, Again, I always say the red paper clip, but just the you say turning over every stone. But I think that's what matters. They built well, all these free agents are hitting and making sense and not breaking the bank. When you accumulate a lot of plus players, maybe not just a star, but look how many sacks this defense has. Yeah. Like, and that comes from just getting a bunch of plus players in different ways, drafting waiver wire ads, or or you know, I should say off the street ads. And you know, Reddick, who was like kind of I would say a big money addition, but you know. You put a little, put a little, they sprinkled it with it. In a year, it's a yeah, very fine reasonable deal contract for an edge rusher. Very but, reasonable, but it's not a, a bank breaking. Oh my god, this is wave the flag. Look, we won the off season type deal. It was more just like, oh, that's a nice solid deal. And honestly, you just want to speak to other teams, maybe just being in their own heads with some of these players like Bradbury or Reddick, and going like, well, I don't know why Reddick, why, why, why he isn't like a guy that everyone's looking at. He's gotten sacks in two different places. Why isn't this guy like getting looked at? Because he's undersized a little bit. I don't know, but they understood. Oh, these are good players. Which so just accumulated a bunch of plus players, and look what happens. <laughs> it happens. That matters. That not everyone has to be a star, but having above average to good to very good. Oh man, just with that. There's no real, real weakness, and there's depth. Now you're drafting, and guys can grow into their roles, or you can decide, oh, that guy doesn't have it. Doesn't matter. We're not wasting 500 snaps on this guy that shouldn't be playing. It's only 100 snaps. Again, that's just organizational plan. That's just health. That's just the, uh, every way you can team build, they do it. Trading, additions up from free agency, and drafting. They find ways to do it and find ways to maximize it. Now they've done it several times, and here we are. They're in the Final Four once again. I think you could have a similar conversation about the Niners and yes. what they have done in building this team. And yep. you and I have made this joke before. I mean, this is, this is it. Like this is the culmination for Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. And if they do this and they get to the Super Bowl, look at what Kyle Shanahan has done over the last five or six years. Okay. Mm -hmm. 2016, he builds one of the most efficient offenses in the history of modern football in Atlanta. Yep. They are, 28 to three away from winning that game. Yep. 2017 and 2018, 2017 is his first year. They were all yep. Brian Hoyer or whatever year. Yeah. 2018. They made the trade for Jimmy the middle of the year before he gets hurt three games into the season. It's a disaster year. 2019. They go to the Super Bowl. They're very close to beating Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. They were a very, mm -hmm. very good football team. 2020 disaster year. Everyone gets hurt again. Last year, they're a Jaquaski tart pick from potentially going to the Super Bowl. And now they're one game away again. Yep. I mean, what he has done and built there on offense, obviously, I mean, he's the centerpiece of that entire offensive plan. This ideal, this, this 
kind of philosophical goal that they've chased of playing this quarterbackless version of NFL football that shouldn't be yeah. possible. They're very close to realizing it. And yeah. that's I, I'm mean, that's not like even a dig at Brock Purdy. It's no. what Jimmy Garoppolo accomplished in that offense. Like that's what they've tried to build is like a quarterback free model of offensive success in 2022 that shouldn't be doable. And somehow they've managed yeah. and the defense has been great. So yes. it's what they have built there. And over the last five years, I mean, I, I think that really it's time to kind of take a step back, win or even lose this game and appreciate what they have done and what they have put in place. That's, that's absolutely it. It's the, it is, it's almost better. Like is if it was Trey Lance and they reached this point, we could say, Oh yeah, this is Shanahan's kind of master class, you know? Uh, but also it's almost better. That's the third string rookie quarterback that just proves that point. Like you said, a quarterback list team, quarterback list offense that can still churn out yards and explosive plays. It's almost more speaks more to Shanahan. And like, this is his perfect idealized version <laughs> is that it's almost better. It reflects it better that it's a third string quarterback and that they've reached this point, like you were saying, but I think that's just so perfect. That's the way it's his Mona Lisa in a way, but this team is, we knew we were excited about the defense and they haven't disappointed at all this year. And I think the offense, of course, is the Shanahan offense. You're always going to be intrigued. Once they drop that, when CMC in there, it's just been so brilliant to watch and just watching this versatile, versatile offense with that finds ways to get guys on islands and win and create explosive plays out of thin air and doing it kind of different ways week to week. Been really a, such a fun team to watch the last couple months. Uh, and more, it's just more in different ways or different ways than usual with the Shanahan offense. Usually it's like, oh, look at that outside zone run. Oh, they tossed it this time. Look at that outside zone run. Ooh, they tossed it and he cut back on that outside on that zone run. Oh, wow. Now it's just different stuff and the formations and the shifting and the, and the pass game. It's so great on top of having what I think is the most fun defense I've watched in years. Uh, I think this for now, both of these teams are brilliant to watch in different ways. And I think that's what makes this game so exciting, but credit to both of them in different ways. And, but they got to the same point. I think they also deserve credit for the defensive staff. They built the sustainability yeah. of that defensive staff you know, having your defensive coordinator hired away and getting better right. <laughs> on defense. I mean, he always happens, right? <laughs> Kyle Shanahan gave, I mean, that that's his, fir his first job was on these Niners staffs. He worked with him in Houston and identifying young def or young coaching talent and trying to fill the pipeline with those guys. is mm -hmm. a huge part of being able to sustain success on offense. He can do it seemingly by himself, but right. on defense, you need to be able to refill that cupboard when it starts getting plucked away and they've been able to do it. Next year will be an entirely different challenge if yeah. D'Amico gets hired, but that pipeline that they've built of coaching talent and it keeps getting hired away and they keep sustaining success is incredible. And the sheer amount of elite players that they have mm -hmm. talk about mm -hmm. the Eagles where they have like kind of a minus level players at almost every single position. Yeah. The Niners have a plus, like six yeah. A pluses, and two defensive player of the year candidates, yes. like <laughs> an all pro safety. And I think that's what's so impressive is that they have, I mean, the best left tackle in the league. They have the best edge rusher in the league. They have the best yeah. off ball linebacker in the league. They have arguably yeah. the best running back in the league. And it's just incredible how much elite talent that they've gotten. And they've done it a bunch of different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Like going out and making the Trent Williams trade, so yep. two third round picks. I mean, that's you could have done that if you were another team. So, again, organizational health and stability and what they've shown over the last five years. There's a reason that these teams are consistently in these conversations. All right. Yes. Who's your X factor in this game? I, I'm going back to my first stat that I brought up Avante Maddox and him playing and him being on the field helps out. If he's on the field, that you start taking away answers from that 49ers offense. And that I think that's matter that matters. I think the Eagles deep. Eagles offense versus the 49ers defense is going to be just a slugfest. Big plays on both sides. I think the other side of the ball is going to be key. I, I think Purdy's going to have to drop back. And when he does, taking away one of his best options, which is attacking the slot and or slot receivers, that, that might make it a little harder on this 49ers. Make it more, a little more one-dimensional even more than they are right now. So I think Avante Maddox and him playing is going to be huge, huge, huge for that Eagles defense. That's littered with so many good players. I'm going with the linebackers, the, the, the Eagles linebackers. Same if thing, they're yeah. going to try to just pick on the middle of the field, yep. what do we see from those two guys against the run it, when they're trying to move them in the pass game? What does that look like? Because yep. that's the exact area that the Niners want to go after in every that's facet it. of their offense. So how do you respond? Yep. All right. What do you think happens? 
I'm going with the Eagles. I I originally originally was going to say Niners, but I'm going to go with the Eagles. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I'll even do the score prediction. Uh, I'll go 2017 Eagles. What's ultimately the deciding factor for you? Purdy. And that's that's it. I think there's so many good players out there and it's if Purdy makes just a couple throws and avoids any turnovers, the Niners are way in this game. I'm, and also, I just want to see how D'Amico Ryan's plays this Eagles offense. So like, I, that's a great point you brought up that, that about how they expose the weakness of the opposing team. Just think of the Packers game and then the Titans game back to back, running for all those yards against a porous Packers run defense, and then torching the Titans corners. So, so that's that's a that mind. brings me to my answer. That is why I'm picking the Eagles. Okay, I yes. just think they have they've shown an answer to pretty much every problem that a defense has presented to them. And they have one of the best defenses in the NFL. Right. Like it just, it's not just that they have this offense that can kind yeah. of find a path every single right. time. It's that on defense, they're still top to bottom, an incredible team. I just team. The other X factor I would keep coming back to is just what does Hassan Reddick do? Like yeah. it is like, can he take over the game again in the way that he did early against the giants? And then combined with just having a path forward all the time on offense when they're 100% healthy. So I, I think it's going to be close. Just like you said, I just think it, I have to pick the Eagles based on what we've seen from their offense all year. Yeah.